Here's another example of normal stress and shear stress. This is a past exam problem and it is a rather difficult one. So if you can do this one, then that means you understand the concepts and the basics. So we have this image and it says the pin at A has a diameter of 30 millimeters. The pin at B has diameter of 25 millimeters. Cable BC has a diameter of 33 millimeters. Find the average shear stress in pins A and B and the average normal stress in cable BC. So the first thing you need to start off with is drawing the forces, the unknowns that you're going to have to find. And I am going to pin it here and try to find FBC first. So I um, pin it here and then I just do the sum of the moments about point A. So we have negative 30 kilonewtons times 2 meters, so that's this force and that would cause a clockwise rotation so it's negative and then plus four-fifths FBC times six um, it's four-fifths because that is the sine component of FBC so then we end up with FBC equals 12.5 kilonewtons alright so now that we know FBC um, we move on to find AX and we find AX by doing the sum of the mom or the sum of the forces in the x direction. So this should be pretty easy because you only have AX and the the cosine component of FBC. So I hope you can solve through that. So you get AX equals negative 7.5 kilonewtons. Because it's negative 7.5, it means that it will actually be pointing to the left. But I'm just gonna keep it like this. Write my value and then say left so that I remember. Then I'm gonna solve for AY. For AY I just do the sum of the forces in the Y direction. I have AY 30 and then the sine component of FBC. So I get AY equals 20 kilonewtons. So that means that the way I drew it is correct. So it's 20 kilonewtons pointing up. So the next thing that I did is I just solved for all of my areas at pin A um, and at pin B and the cable just to get it out of the way. So they give us the three different diameters, and obviously area is pi r squared. So I just kept it like this without getting a final answer. Um, okay, so then we move on, and the first thing I did is I found the average normal stress in the cable just because it's the simplest one to find, I guess. So average is average normal stress is normal force divided by the area. So FBC divided by, by the area of BC so we found FBC to be 12.5 divided by pi r squared so we end up with 14.6 megapascals okay the next step is to find the average shear stress in pins A and B so I started with pin B first so if we look at this this is a pin that experiences single shear just because um, the tear is happening only right here and there's only like one shear occurring so th that means that it's just V divided by A so we have the area of pin B and we do FBC divided by the area at pin B and that gives us 25.5 megapascals pretty simple um, because it's single shear and we already know the force Okay, then we proceed to pin A. So here, we need to look at the fact that um, this is actually going to be a double shear because you have like a shear on this side and a shear on this side that would um, cause a double shear. So the first thing we need to find is the actual force. So we have the components which we already found. We have 20 kilonewtons up and 7.5 to the left. So we would need to find the resultant of that uh, which I called FA. So in order to do that, we just do um, distance formula, AX squared plus AY squared square root, and that gives us F of A is equal to 21.4 kilonewtons. So now that we've found the force, and we know that this is actually double shear, we can just go to our formula and plug it all in. So because it's double shear, it's going to be F of A divided by two, over the area of pin A. So pretty um, straightforward calculation right there. So the shear stress at 
pin A is 15.1 megapascals. Now, if this was only a single shear, then we would get rid of this too. So it would just be F of A over the area of A, and that means that our magnitude would actually be twice this. So just, just know the difference between double and single shear, and um, I think that's an important concept to understand. So here I just put all of our answers to the question. They wanted the average normal stress at BC, which we have here, and then the shear in A and B. And this, once again, this is a really good test question.